Good morning guys, I hope you are having a great day from wherever it is you're watching from. Now, Monday is going to be the absolute deadline for the Azimio group to file their petition in the Supreme Court. If they fail to do it by then, it's done and dusted. They don't have another chance to head on over to that court. Now, it seems they've been waiting till the last day to do this. Now, why is that the case? It could be that they're trying to delay to the absolute maximum the swearing-in of President-elect William Samoy Ruto. Or it could be that they need as much time as possible to put their case together. Because going to the Supreme Court is no easy feat. You need to come in ready. You need to come in with evidence. You need to come in with facts. Facts and only facts can win you any case inside that courtroom. So there's a number of questions I'd like us to answer together as far as this petition is concerned. Question number one. Does our outgoing president, the Azimio chair, support this petition? Question number two. Does Azimio have a valid case, and what are their odds of winning? Question number three. What powers does the Supreme Court have as far as this petition is concerned, and what would be the implications of that? Now, before we proceed, I would just like to urge you to head on over to YouTube. If you're already there, it's as simple as hitting the subscribe button. If you're not there, you're watching from a different platform. Just search for David Wafula. I'll be the first one to pop up. Hit the subscribe button and this is the kind of content you'll be getting on a daily. Now on to question one. Does our outgoing president... There's so much glare on my glasses from the sun. Now does the outgoing president support this petition? The answer from me is a resounding no. The sitting president, who is also our outgoing president in a few days if not weeks, is also the chairman of Jubilee. Now, he may not have issued a statement directly, but through his proxies, through his juniors, he can actually give you a hint as to what is going on inside his head. Now, I recently saw the Secretary General of Jubilee, Honorable Jeremiah Kioni. He mentioned, in a brief run-up with the reporters and media, he mentioned that there was massive rigging in this particular election, but even he cannot find any evidence. Just watch this. We must address this issue. I want to say it again. We have no country if we do not address the massive rigging that we experienced. Rigging that might be difficult for members of the county assembly, even members of parliament who lost to prove it in a court of law. But it is in the public domain that something went wrong. And uh, it was a scheme that had been worked on with the connivance of IEBC. The commissioners certainly were in it, I can tell you. The returning officers, the POs, and it went all the way to the clerks. And we can even now confirm that even our security agents were recruited in this scheme. Those you may again not be able to prove it in a court of law. But as I was coming, I received a call from somebody from Kisi Angman, and he said, Kenyans this side are angry. They don't even want to discuss the outcome of the, 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 the general elections that we had. So basically what Jeremiah Kioni is saying is that rigging took place, we have no evidence, and even if we were to go to the Supreme Court, we are not likely to have any form of victory within that court. And this happened to be the very same sentiment of the president in my opinion because the secretary general of jubilee cannot issue a statement that is out of line that is out of order with the chairman of jubilee so i also believe that president uru kenyatta does not really have the time nor the taste for this particular petition now on to question two does azemio have a valid case and what are their odds of winning now, to answer this, we must first understand what are Azimio's complaints as far as this petition is concerned. Now, I have been able to find two of their major complaints. Perhaps they'll give us more during their time in the courtroom. So the first issue with Azimio is turnout. They claim that Chebukati initially reported a 65.4% turnout, which translates to 14,466,779 voters but his final tally was 140,028 votes less at 14,326,751, which according to them is minus those who voted manually. 
what they failed to mention is the spoiled votes. The second issue that Azimio Group has is the voting patterns. Their statement reads, Azimio will seek to know how hundreds of thousands of people voted for presidents only without a corresponding number of spoilt ballots for lower seats. Whoever is their legal advisor surely must be having the answer to this question. Now, on the 8th of August 2022, which was just a few hours before the election, the IEBC announced that voters will not be required to vote for all six elective positions when they arrive at their respective polling stations. Now, according to Gogo Nguma, the Nairobi County Elections Manager, this was designed to help avoid a repeat of the 2017 poll, which resulted in nullification of results. So the IEBC was one step ahead. They had problems in 2017. Trust me, they were not happy to do or to go through a repeat election. It's tedious, it's long, it's tiresome. There's a bunch of threats. There's so much pressure on their backs. And so they did not want a repeat of this election. And that is why they went to a greater extent to remove certain clauses and regulations and rules from the commission to prevent a 2017, to prevent rather a 2022 nullification. And one of those was removing the requirement that you have to vote for all the elective positions. So now you can simply go there and vote for an MC and leave. If your father is running for MP, you can go vote for your father and leave without voting for president and it will still be valid. So they pulled the rug from beneath uh, the Azimio group and in my opinion they have no case. This was already addressed by the IBC and for anyone to even be asking such questions when they've already been addressed is quite shocking. So they're really skating on thin ice as I see it right now. Now on to question three, which I find very interesting. What powers does the Supreme Court have as far as this case is concerned? Now there are only three options for them. Option number one, they can issue a stay of Wafula Chibukati's findings, which basically means William Ruto remains to be president-elect and he goes on to be sworn in and Azimio loses the petition. Now, the second power that the Supreme Court has is the nullification of the presidential elections, which is similar to what we saw in 2017. They will probably give the IBC a directive to organize for fresh elections in 60 days and Kenyans will go out and vote once more. Now, this for me looks very, very much unlikely in this particular day and age. The Supreme Court does not want to seem like an activist court that always seems to side with one candidate time and time again. That kind of precedent is not one that the Supreme Court wants to have. Remember, politicians get it wrong all the time. The voice of reason has to be the judiciary. Now, if in the international community, our judiciary is labeled as the corrupt entity, that will not sit well with the Supreme Court justices and our judicial arm of government, in my opinion. So I don't think they will choose this route. Now, there is a third route, a third option. This is the third option that the Supreme Court has. Now, under Section 80 of the Elections Act of Kenya, subsection 4A to B, and I'll read it to you. And I quote, An election court may, by order, direct the commission to issue a certificate of election to a president, a member of parliament, or a member of county assembly if a. Upon recount of the ballots cast, the winner is apparent and b. That the winner is found not to have committed an election's offense. So what does that statement mean? It means basically that it's either they found that William Ruto committed no offense and he stays as president, or there is an offense and they order a recount. Now this would be a very big nightmare for Kenya Kwanzaa and William Ruto. Reason being the margin is so small. It is very small. When the margin is that small and you go for a recount, the gap normally does not expand, it shrinks. Votes will be found. As history has it, votes are always found. There could be a batch that wasn't counted. There could be a batch that is illegally introduced into the ballots. Any and all things can take place. And it can result to William Ruto losing his victory. This is a very dangerous option. And I was not aware of this particular option up until very recently. I was talking to a very good friend of mine. Uh, he's more abreast on these legal matters. So a recount is very, very dangerous for President-elect William Ruto. Now you'll remember the Bush versus Al Gore case in 2002 in the United States. We had a number of recounts in Florida, Florida State. And every time they kept counting, 
the margin was shrinking. And it could have reached a point where Al Gore could have taken the victory from George Bush. So it's always very dangerous. I would be more open and willing to have a recount if the margin was a million or more, if, I'm, if I were in the Kenya Kwanzaa team. But with such a small margin of 200 and something thousand, you are playing with fire. And by the way, the recount can be national or regional. And I suspect that the Azimio group will be seeking a recount in the Mount Kenya region. And that is where they're actually bringing up this point of many people voting for the presidential candidate and voting for nobody else. That has been seen in Mount Kenya. And if there was a recount, a regional recount, that is where we are most likely to see the Azimio outfit target. So all in all, does the Azimio group stand a chance in the Supreme Court? I personally think not. We are not going to get an nullification of the results, and I don't think we are going to have a recount. It is not looking possible for me, because IBC took steps to ensure that we are not having a nullification of results or any issue pertaining to the results that Wafula Chebukati and his commission finds. How did they do this? By getting rid of the manual register as a primary tool and only having it used as a secondary or a prime or a safety net, if you will, when the Kim's kit fails. And they also made sure that they have issued that directive, that it is no longer a must that you vote for all the people on the ballot. You can simply go there and vote for the president and leave, and that single vote will stand valid. So I don't see Azimio having any case here, but... Those are just my opinions, especially if you are a legal mind, I would really love to hear what you have to say. So um, just comment below, let me know what you think. Does Azimio stand a chance? Uh, what election malpractices do you think they can point out to sway the justices? Do comment below, I'd really love to read those comments. I'll read as many as I can and respond to as many as possible. Now, before I close this video, I'd just like to urge you to head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula. I'll be the first one to pop up, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be getting a bunch of content such as this. If politics is what you're into, that is what we cover day in, day out, 24-7 every day. Now, uh, do have yourselves a great day, guys. It's a beautiful Saturday. The sun is out. Enjoy uh, what God has given us. It's a beautiful day. I most certainly will, after posting this video, I'm definitely heading out just to relax with friends, to honor Manchester United, what is going on. This group, they are becoming like a, a Zimio. <laughs>